right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to another episode of Hey Mr. Sotko, what do you think of this? The rules are very, very simple in the comments down below. You just ask a crypto question, and then I will take that question for the next video. Make a video about it, talk about it, educate about it, all that good stuff. So today I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Normally I just take somebody's uh, comment and then paste it onto my screen, and then I talk about that comment for the entirety of the video or two. Uh, but today... Uh, I'm going to just uh, scroll through some of the comments uh, on my previous YouTube video. So, not too many commented uh, on, my, on my last video, and uh, that's okay. But um, So that's why I'm kind of doing it this way. Um, not to say that there weren't good questions, but uh, there wasn't a, a ton of them, essentially. So I figured I could just kind of sweep through and talk about some of these. So uh, here we go. So on the candle charts, why is there sometimes a space between the bars? Um, so we'll ask, we'll answer that one first, and let's see if I can find you guys some spaces between the candle bars on uh, on GDEX here. And we might not be able to. <clears throat> you can't always do it. Uh, kind of looks like there's one there, but uh, there really is. Um, there's a little space there. Let's see if we can see Bitcoin Cash. Not really any particular spaces. <clears throat> um, you can see some some pretty big jumps though. This one was uh, up here and then went all the way down to 1230 and such. Uh, Ethereum, no big spaces here. And Litecoin, I suspect not either. So normally um, when he's talking about spaces, sometimes you'll see a completely empty spot here in the candle chart. Sometimes several empty spots, it depends and so there's two reasons for that. One of the reasons is um, that there was no trading during that period. There was no sells. There was no buying. There just wasn't any kind of trading during that period. And therefore, there was no candle to produce in the first place. Now, the reason why I have it set to one minute is because within that one minute period, there could be a chance of no trading. Uh, when it comes to five minutes, uh, there is almost always some kind of trade in a five minute period. That's why I had it on the one minute, just so I could maybe show you guys an example of it. Um, so with some of these, will you see it cut off? I think it was a uh, Bitcoin cash had some cutoff ones is that uh, there was very, very little trading in between this minute and this minute. So at one point it was here, then the next minute it just suddenly shot all the way down and then started to increase from that period. So, <clears throat> so some kind of market force dropped it just as this, as this candle changed to the next one. So the second reason is that there may be a server down. Sometimes trading is halted on an exchange for a few minutes while they update servers or do maintenance or whatever. So you'll see a uh, missing portion of trading in that time because there just wasn't any trades because the exchange for that particular coin or for the entire exchange was down for a period of time. Um, so... Uh, this one's a little broken English, and so I apologize. So also, all uh, our candle charts uh, per exchange, e.g. exchanges are independent and can't affect each other, question mark. would like to know about, more about that. So what you're talking about there is that some uh, exchanges are different prices. So if you take a look on certain exchanges, um, while well, I don't have a good example up to show you at the moment, but you can just do this yourself. Uh, you can bring up Kraken or Bitfinex or Bitrix or Poloniex, anything like that, and look up the price of Bitcoin. If you see the price of Bitcoin at on GDAX is exactly, let's just call it exactly $1,230. It might be $1,232 on another exchange. So no, the candle charts are not the same uh, for every exchange. They're for that particular exchange, for that particular coin. Um, so there is a thing called arbitrage. <clears throat> God, I just can't clear my throat sometimes. So there's a thing called arbitrage trading, and it's been around for a long time, essentially. So it, it, it came from the stock market. All these, all, these all these terms and such come from the stock market where they originated. And so arbitrage is just essentially uh, taking your money from one market to another market where it's higher. So if, if let's say I bought uh, Bitcoin on GDAX and then I took it over to Kraken where let's say it was $10 higher and then sold it over there and then went back to GDAX and did that over and over. That's arbitrage trading. For most people, that's not really feasible because sending your Bitcoin across the network like that is going to take some fees. So you're going to eat all kinds of fees for, for, for sending it from an exchange and then receiving it on another exchange. 
and then sending your money around. So for most people, for the average investor, even myself, that's not really something that you can do particularly easily. Sure, there are some possibly some clever ways to do it, but uh, for the most part, I just stick with one exchange for the most part. Uh, I do use Kraken for some other altcoins, but uh, for, for my main coins, for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, I trade on GDAX, and then, you know, like Ripple and things like that, like Stellar and such are on Kraken. So I don't really bother mixing them around with arbitrage. So that's why you see a lot of these lending coins and they call themselves arbitrage coins. And what they do is essentially just trade back and forth between exchanges and make money that way. Uh, but don't ever trust a lending coin because it's uh, it's a big disaster. Uh, so next comment here. Hey, Mr. Sotko, can you please say sauce in the next video? And you didn't pronounce it right. That is sauce. Juicy, juicy sauce. I know everybody doesn't like it for some reason, but uh, I, I love it. I think it's hilarious. Um, another thing is that I uploaded uh, the when you were trying to buy the dip meme, uh, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. And uh, that's probably going to result in people unsubscribing. Uh, because let me let me tell you just for just for fun here just a, uh, a little digression if you will uh, whenever you upload any anything that's even remotely different than what you what you upload on a daily basis uh, people unsubscribe so for example when I when I uploaded the uh, mr. Sotka's 400 foot underground vault video and that was that that was a parody video basically me pretending to be a Bitcoin shill. Um, and I don't think, I think most people that it, the, like the joke went right over their head. And that actually, that video actually netted me a, uh, a net 15 subscriber loss. So it was essentially a detriment to my channel, but I thought it was super hilarious. So I uploaded it anyway. Um, and so I'll upload that one because it's, uh, it's funny. And it's also interesting that all my videos are shown on the right, on the recommended side up next, uh, just in case I want to watch my own videos, I guess. Interesting. Thanks for the advice. Thank you. Uh, what do I think about JQ? I don't even know. Uh, I'd have to look up JQ. So uh, we'll move on for that one. Uh, so what do you think of selling 1 million coins at once? So let's take a look into that real quick. So as you can see, you can see the sell walls. You can see the amount of coins, if you will, in the order book here. So there's like 81 there, 21 here looking to be sold, 10 looking to be purchased, and so on. So if you had a million coins here, now you couldn't really do that with Bitcoin because, uh, well, this is Bitcoin Cash. You couldn't really do that so much with Bitcoin because if you had a million dollar, if a million coins of Bitcoin, you would be like, it would be it's so much money. You'd be a billionaire. Um, you'd pretty much own the entirety of the entire Bitcoin. Uh, but let's say it was like Litecoin. Or let's say it was like some small coin or something like that, and you had a million of them. Um, you can see these little sell and buy walls here. And if there was a million right there, uh, the problem would be is that when you when you create a limit sell, um, you would have to do you'd have to go down here and do like a fill or a kill, and it would never fill, so it would always get killed for the most part because there wouldn't be a, a million buyers, uh, a million Bitcoin uh, Litecoin buyers. So a good until canceled. So what what you, what would happen is let's say this is a million and let's say the price goes all the way up to there and then this 1000 is down here uh so you have a million coins right here that means a million people would have to buy your coins or not necessarily a million people but a million coins would have to be purchased by then what would happen is is that um it would take forever to sell your coins and you would find that you would only partially fill your coins and the price would start to dip below that because the buyers would start to back off a little bit because uh, it's going to take them forever. So uh, the buyers would start to back off, the coin would dip below you, and your your million coins would start to go up a little bit. And you you would what you would find out is that you would get a partial fill down here. It would show the, the fill, and it would be a partial. So you would only sell a small amount of your coins. Now, you could do a market sell, but the problem with a market sell is that if you were to sell 1 million coins, it's going to sell those 1 million coins. It's going to sell them right now. So what would happen is that you would have a million coins right here and you want to sell them all for $205.81. The problem is, is there isn't a million buyers here. There isn't a million coins down here. So that's going to soak up all of these coins. You see all these coins here, 4,500, 3,800. It's going to push the price down and it's going to buy all of these coins. So you notice if it, if it pushes all these coins down and buys all of these, you're going to be all the way down here. So if we, we let's bring up the aggregation super high here and let's see if there's even a million on GDAX. Uh, so we have 37,016, uh, we're looking at about 100 there. Uh, it would probably push the price all the way down to maybe $10. So the thing is, is not all of your coins would sell for $205.81. 
Some of your coins would sell for $205. Some of them would sell for 200 and all the way down. So if you had a million and you were expecting to make every, every coin sell for $205, it wouldn't happen um, because the market would just sell all of them and it would purchase all of these coins. See, all of these coins here probably don't even equal a million. So what you would do is you would end up crashing the the, the whole market on GDAX, and you would you would lower the price down to nothing. However, that price would spike right back up because people would notice that uh, the coin that that Litecoin is now selling for like one penny. So it would, you would essentially flash crash the exchange because you bought so many coins that you just basically bought the entire price. You, you'd buy all of these essentially. You'd bring it down to a penny or 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 somewhere around there. Somewhere you would you would purchase all of those coins, um, and you'd bring it down to a dollar or less or something like that. So that's what would happen if you tried to sell a million coins at once. So you would have to do it in chunks, um, you know, just just a relative chunk amount. Um, some exchanges don't even let you sell that many coins at once or let you accumulate that much money at once. Uh, you might have to increase your limit and things like that. So it would actually be pretty difficult to sell one million coins at once. Um, you might think it would be easy, but in, in turn, you would actually get a lot less for your money if you sold them all at once because you would you would take the whole market away. Uh, so if you had a million coins, you would want to sell them in chunks. Uh, will, will you ever draw, uh, dive into buying stocks as well? Uh, I did. I did once. I had a um, mm, little, little under 100,000 in mutual stock uh, several years ago. And I don't think I will be going into stocks uh, since, uh, since I have the beautiful, wonderful, mm, 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 saucy crypto. Uh, what do you think of this question? I think about that question sometimes. And can you talk about making money off upcoming forks? Is it risky? Not necessarily. Um, it's risky if somebody tells you to put your 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 uh, to send to a private address to get your to get your coins. Like if if um, for example somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, if you if you put your coins in this address or on this website, you, you will be granted your coins." Um, that that's super risky. That's super shady. So, for example, when, when Bitcoin Gold came out, if you had a nano treasure, treasure like those little treasure wallets and the nano wallets, if you had one of those and you put your Bitcoin on it, what you do is you, you, is you have your Bitcoin on there. So let's say you had one Bitcoin at the time of the fork on the wallet, and then you install the little uh, BTG app on it. Uh, so you add B, uh, B, Bitcoin Gold to the, to the wallet. Uh, then it recognizes the fact that you had Bitcoin on that wallet during that date at which it forked and it will grant you one bitcoin gold so it's not too hard um you just uh it depends on what coin and when it happened um what do i think the best proof of stake coins for for people for with uh very little money um so i'm not like i'm a fan of proof of stake in the sense that I think it's sort of the future. I know a lot of people feel that proof of stake is is vulnerable. I, I hear that sometimes. I've heard it from some you know crypto professionals. Uh, but I think it, it sort of is 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 the future in the sense that like we can't keep mining for for forever. Uh, it's it's taking an like I don't even mean to sound like an SJW like bleeding heart. I'm actually very conservative, um, but like or an environmentalist. But um, the, the amount of electricity that Bitcoin mining and crypto mining takes is unbelievable. And I'm actually, you know, a part, a part of that. So I mine, um, I mine quite a bit and um, it's just really unsustainable. So, but I'm not too into, uh, you know, proof of stake coins at the moment. Um, I would say when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, it's going to be proof of stake. Uh, so hold on to your Ethereum for now, your Ethereum 1.0. And I don't mean classic, Ethereum classic, I mean just Ethereum. And when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, I think it's going to be a few years, though, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and when that comes out, um, you you should receive you should receive the fork. And so you will have Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be a hard fork or a soft fork. There's actually not a lot of information on it. If it's a soft fork, then you will receive Ethereum 2.0 for the amount of Ethereum 1.0 you have. And if it's a hard fork, um, it's just going to be turned into Ethereum 2.0. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be more like a soft fork. But we will see. Uh, there's not a lot of information on that. I, I try to look it up once in a while, and whenever there is more uh, on that, I will let you guys know. Also, there is a uh, Vitaly Buterik uh, YouTube 
video of him talking about Ethereum 2.0, um, but he, he still says it's like three to four years out and he doesn't really give too many details in that video. I watched most of the video, unfortunately. I didn't watch all of the video. Didn't have a lot of time. It's like a three or four hour video. Um, so got any idea why Coinbase is sitting on two coins I bought last week? Uh, I don't really know. Um, if you bought with a debit card, it, it takes about a, a week um, to actually receive your coins. If you bought with the debit card, if you buy with a credit card, you get them instantly, but there's a bigger fee. Um, and then Awesome Miner seems to not do what we told it to do. Your setup video worked well until a few days ago. So I'm not sure what that means either. So when people ask me questions like this, I, I, I can't really answer the question because it didn't, like, what does that even mean that it didn't do what, it, what, what it's told to do? Um, so software doesn't really work like that. Software works exactly how you tell it to work, um, unless there's some kind of big bug, admittedly. Um, but Awesome Miner runs just fine for me. Uh, mining profits are way, way down for everybody. So if you've noticed your mining profits going way down, don't worry, you're not the only one. It's everybody. <clears throat> um, this one wasn't really a question. Uh, that's not true with Bitfinex. Well, it's stated on the front of their website. So if it's not true, maybe they should change that. Um, maybe should, they should change that um, front logo of their website. Because when you go to log into Bitfinex, uh, it basically says they want $10,000. Don't use this if you're a newbie. It's like a professional platform. So um, you know, screw me, right, for reading. Um, another great video, don't use 500 plus. They charge you for $20, 20 pounds a night for open orders after 2, 10 p.m. Uh, yeah, I agree. Don't use 500 plus. It's a stock exchange, and uh, stock exchanges close um, at, at night. They close at night, and they close on the weekends usually too. So uh, a stock exchange website that holds crypto is not really particularly useful, whereas uh, GDAX or something like that is open 24-7, so you can just trade whenever. <clears throat> Um, let's see, alternative uh, besides Coinbase to trade crypto to fiat, um, Kraken works for, for, for that. I, I think a lot of the exchanges do, actually. Uh, what do I think of Marxist Leninism? Stalin did nothing wrong. He comments on just about every video I make, and uh, I start to, it's, I, I get a little lonely when Stalin himself does not comment on my videos. For some reason, <laughs> he comments on like every single one of my videos. So, um, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he means 1905 with this. I'm not sure what 195 means. Should I know that? I'm not really sure. Uh, Marxist Leninism. Uh, why not? F for some weird reason, it has nothing to do with crypto. Um, it's a good idea in practice. It never. It's, it's never really worked. You, you, you know. I think. I think I liked. Uh, I think I liked Germany's national socialism a little bit more. And whoa, 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 whoa. Er, let's hit the brakes. That's not to be confused with like anti-Semitism or like racism or anything like that. Um, you know, cause I believe everybody that's in America is an American kind of thing. Everybody that's in a country is, is don't get me wrong there. I, I just believe the policy itself uh, and the people benefited more from from socialism in Germany. And don't get me wrong, I'm, 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 I'm a free market kind of guy. I'm a conservative, I'm a Republican. So um, just for fun. Uh, Marxist leninism versus socialism. I'll take socialism over communism. Uh, communism didn't uh, work too well for the Soviet Union. Um, let's see. Hey, Mr. Sanko, who is that in your avatar? Is that Obama wearing a socialist hat? <laughs> Not far from the truth. So my thumbnail is. Uh, let's see. I put. I actually put a couple. Um, I, I put a couple pictures here. So my thumbnail is from a band photo. I was in a band for many years. Um, and it's called it was called Joe Nameless. And it was a comedy, like a dark comedy rock band. So there is me, I was the drummer, there was uh, my good friend, uh, the guitarist, uh, the bassist down here. So we all had so, like this weird character, we would go on stage in these weird outfits, sometimes they changed up and stuff. But I was the beat commander because I was a drummer. Um, this was the chef. Um, this was our keyboardist, um, who is named TJ Toothless Jeff because he doesn't have any teeth. Um, he's one of the coolest guys ever, though. Um, this is uh, my singer, who was Mr. Eight or uh, Mr. Ocho. And this was the nasty, dirty man, my bassist. So uh, this, this, this picture, my actual picture, is basically a cutout form of this. And I had a, uh, we had an artist, a, a good friend of ours who was an artist, um, take each ind individual one of our pictures and uh, put it in like a pentagram shape. So I was in a band. Um, and... Uh... <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Um, so, yeah. So, no, it's not Obama in a socialist hat. I think that's like the second person to say that. How does it even look like Obama in a socialist hat? I'm sorry. No, it's it's me. It's from a it's from a band. Um, I've been Mr. Sotko for um, uh, I was known as Mr. Sotko or the beat commander in the band. I've I've been known as Mr. Sotko from for, since like 2002 or something like that. Uh, the name Mr. Sotko. Um, if you guys are wondering. Uh, my last name is not Sotko. Um, so if you guys are wondering where Mr. Sotko came from, um, this is an interesting story. So me and some friends were sitting in a car when we were teenagers. Uh, we were sitting in uh, on the side of a road. We were doing things we probably should not do. Um, we were teenagers, mind you. And um, we were in a De Lulanos, which if you don't know what a De Lulanos, please Google it now. It is a very, very small foreign made car. And it was a total POS, if you will. And uh, so we were sitting in it, and quite frankly, we were pretty high. And we all, um, I, I came up with this funny idea that the car would randomly pull over to the side of the road, stop, the windows would lock, and your seatbelts would engage, and you would not be able to exit the vehicle. And all of a sudden, a Japanese woman's voice would say, press Sotko button, or car will explode for your safety. Please mind my accent. So press Sotko button now, or car will explode for your safety. Over and over and over in a Japanese woman's voice. Meanwhile, all the buttons on the dash would blink randomly, and were all in Japanese. Uh, so you didn't know what Sotko, uh, what the Sotko button was, or how to push it. So therefore, you were unable to push the Sotko button, and the car then exploded for your safety, uh, killing all inside. So uh, the Sotko button turned into Mr. Sotko, which I used in, in video games um, from ranging from StarCraft 1 to Diablo 2 to Warcraft 3 to uh, even games now. So if you see Mr. Sotko online in a video game in PUBG or something like that, it's probably me. Um, what do I think of Ox? Uh, I haven't really looked up Ox, so I'm, I can't really say. What do I think about proof of stake pools? Uh, they work. <laughs> I wish I could tell you more than that. They, they, they do the job. They, they work. Um, what do you think about the, uh, the possibility of Nano going uh, downhill or still a possibility of it going up? So Nano is being talked about a lot. So Nano um, is typically going up. I haven't looked at the price in a while of Nano, but um, there, there's definitely a good chance that Nano will, will continue increasing in price in a while. So... Um, you know, it's just a good coin to to uh, to invest in. It's it's probably not going to go to the moon or anything, uh, whatever your definition of the moon is. But uh, that's it. So uh, that's it for uh, the video. Um, I think I wanted to show you guys one more thing. Um, so Coinbase user files class action uh, against the company claims insider Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin Cash trading. So if you guys didn't, um, if you guys didn't. If you guys don't remember this, if you will, sorry, I had to sputter a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin Cash was to be introduced um, on, I think, December like 31st on Coinbase. So the problem was uh, is that it was released on December 19th, uh, or maybe it was the 21st. When was it released? I believe it was the 21st or something like that. It was supposed to be the like the 30th or the 31st. So it was either it was released really really early and without warning at all. So there was no tweet, there was no early warning. It was just boom. It just it just popped up out of nowhere um, when it was supposed to be released about 10 days later than that. Uh, and the problem was is that Bitcoin uh, Cash went from uh, very, very low in price to pretty much thousands of dollars just as it released to Coinbase before it hit Coinbase. So that led people to believe that somebody somewhere or multiple people knew somewhere uh, that Bitcoin Cash was going to be put on to Coinbase. When it was put on Coinbase, uh, the, I think the price got up to like something like $9,000 on Coinbase, this says 4,300, but I remember seeing it at like $9,000 locked uh, and people couldn't sell it. They couldn't really buy very well. They couldn't sell it. They could only, they could only buy basically and they could not sell it. So the price went up to like $9,000 and then it corrected super hard and went all the way back down to like a, like a thousand bucks or so. I don't remember the exact figures, but it was really, really bad. It was a total disaster. And so basically some people paid thousands and thousands of dollars per Bitcoin cash for no reason whatsoever. So Coinbase, a major U.S.-based uh, cryptocurrency exchange and wallet platform, faces a class action lawsuit 
claiming that its employees and other insiders benefited from trading on non-public information that the exchange planned to introduce Bitcoin Cash support last December. The recorder law reported on Friday, March 2nd. The complaint was filed by Coinbase user and Arizona citizen Jeffrey Burke, represented by two law firms in the U.S. District Court. Uh, the introduction to the class action complaint brought against Coinbase explains that it is being made on behalf of all Coinbase customers who placed purchase, sale, or trade orders with Coinbase during the period of December 19th through in including December 21st, and who suffered monetary loss as a result of defendants' wrongdoing. So, with a class action lawsuit, in case you guys don't know, I'm not, uh, I'm not really a lawyer or anything, but you guys can get in on this as well. Who the lawyer is, I guess it's, it's not... It's not stated, obviously, but uh, if you try hard enough, you can actually get in on this lawsuit as well. So if you had purchased that Bitcoin cash when it was like 5000 or $6,000 or even like when it reached up to like, I think it was like $9,000 because it was locked and nobody could sell it. And that was a major conspiratorial issue among a lot of people. So if you had bought it for $8,000 and then it corrected back down to where it was supposed to be about 1000 bucks or so, um, you lost a lot of money and it's never, it's, it's, it's likely never, ever going to reach $9,000 or at least not anytime soon. Um, so you can actually get in on this case as well. How you do that? Well, that's all on you. So in the lawsuit, uh, the plaintiff accuses Coinbase of artificially inflated prices by means of dis, uh, disclosing buy and sell orders moments after uh, Coinbase launched Bitcoin Cash support on December 19th. Uh, the move may have caused the price of cryptocurrency to soar by over 130%. From 1865 on December 18th, it reaches highs 4300 on February 22nd or 20. Um, so <clears throat> now that's um, it doesn't show it going all the way up here because I think they they took this price here from uh, Coin Market Cap. But if you can scroll all the way back on Coinbase and things, you can see that the price went way, way, way up. And I'm not sure if they actually corrected that price and removed it, but I was there at the time. I should have taken screenshots of it. It got up to like 9,000 bucks or 8,000. It was something ridiculous. Um, and it was a really huge problem because nobody could sell it. People could only buy it. So therefore it was driving up the price because nobody could sell it. Um, so it was a huge, huge problem. So, uh, you know, if, if you had bought, you know, sometime during that period, uh, you know, you can get on the, in on this class action lawsuit. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately, I mean, I never bought Bitcoin Cash and I never will buy Bitcoin Cash. The only reason why I'll ever buy Bitcoin Cash is maybe to buy an ant miner, but even still, I don't want to support that sort of thing. Uh, so I'd rather buy an ant miner from somewhere else. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a whole bunch of uh, just random stuff. I know it was a kind of a... Um, a different sort of episode, but uh, I figured why not? We've got nothing better to do going on here. Just trying to do some trading, sitting around, figure out how to make a video, talk about some questions, but I'll see you guys later.